Okay, the 5B is relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, and mole concept. Now, if we look at the actual weights or the actual masses of atoms or molecules, they will be extremely light, right? Take one molecule of oxygen. What do you think its mass will be? I mean, it's so less, right? It's very, very small. So we don't use these actual masses. See here, they've given the actual mass, okay? The mass of hydrogen atom is found to be 1.6735 into 10 raised to how much? Minus 24 grams. That means zero point with 24 decimal places. So it's a very small value, right? So we never use the actual masses of atoms or molecules or electrons or any of these atoms. We use something called relative atomic mass. Or we also call them as atomic weight. See, we use the word mass or weight. Okay. Relative atomic mass or atomic weight. For example, take uh, lithium. Now, lithium's atomic number is three and the mass number is seven. Right. This seven is called the relative atomic mass. I mean, this seven is actually mass number represented with the alphabet A, which represents what? The number of protons plus neutrons. Right. This is the whole number because it is the actual number of protons adding with the actual number of neutrons. And what we're seeing right now, the relative atomic mass will be a number very close to the mass number. It's not the same. Here A represents mass number. And what we're studying is relative atomic mass or atomic weight. Atomic weight. So these two numbers, they won't be a whole number. They'll be a decimal number because it's if there's a reason I'll show you that, but it will be very close to the mass number. Okay, so now how do we find this weight, relative atomic mass or the atomic weight? So they found they they made a definition for what is one. Uh, the unit is AMU, atomic mass unit. They came up with a definition for this one AMU. Okay, and what is that definition is? They took carbon. Okay, carbon's mass, no? Carbon's relative atomic mass was exactly 12. Or to be more exact, it was 12.0001. That was the closest you could get to a whole number. And they took that mass of carbon, which is 12, and divided that with 12. So if you take 12 and divide it with 12, what do you get? You get 1, right? That is the definition for 1 AMU. Okay, so look at the definition here. The relative atomic mass or atomic weight of an element is the number of times one atom of an element is heavier than one twelfth times of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. Getting carbon-12, dividing that with 12, you're getting that one AMU. Okay, and then if, like for example, what is the mass of lithium? The mass of lithium is 7 into this one. So that's what they're saying here. The relative, the relative atomic mass of an element is the number of times one atom of the element is heavier than this one AMU. So for example, lithium is seven times heavier than this one AMU. That's what they're saying, no? Is the number of times one atom of that lithium is heavier than one AMU. I'm simplifying each of these words to make you understand. Instead of element, what example I took? Lithium. Instead of one twelfth the times the mass of carbon twelve, I took what? One AMU. Okay. So now replace those words. The relative atomic mass of an of lithium is the number of times. The number of times is seven times the mass of one AMU. That means seven AMU. Understand? So you won't get exactly since it's a mass. Okay, the mass is not coming exactly seven, but it will be somewhere close to seven maybe 6.9 or 7.1. If you look at a periodic table, you will find the actual masses given in that table. I don't know if it's there in this table. Yeah, it's there. Okay, so where's lithium? Look at the mass of lithium. How much is it? It's 6.93 AMU. That means it's 6.93 times the mass of 1 12th of carbon. Understood? What is this lithium's mass? 6.93. What does it mean? 6.94 times what? The mass of 1 12th of carbon. Carbon's mass is 12. So you divide that with 12, you'll get 1. 
that 6.94 times of that mass is the mass of lithium. You understand? Simple. Take carbon, divide carbon with 12. You'll get that 1 AMU. So 6.94 into that 1 AMU is the mass of lithium. Okay. Anna. Yeah. Is the uh, is the elements isotopes like isotopes and the elements weight same like carbon twelve and carbon fourteen? No, twelve is the weight of carbon twelve and fourteen is the weight of carbon fourteen. So, so they differ, right? Yeah, the the mass number changes, therefore the RAM also changes. Mass number okay. depends on protons and neutrons. RAM is the actual mass. Right. Okay. So since protons and neutrons are changing, even the RAM will change. Okay. So what is the atomic mass unit again? It is one twelfth the mass of carbon atom. Which carbon? Carbon twelve, not carbon fourteen. There are two carbons, right? We saw isotopes. So carbon twelve. Okay. Write down the definition for RAM. Okay, are you done writing RAM? So what is the RAM of lithium? Approximately seven. The mass number is seven. The relative atomic mass of lithium is approximately seven. We saw it in the periodic table. How much was that? 6.94 AMU. AMU is the unit. Now the next word is gram atomic mass. Gram atomic mass is if you take the same mass, the mass of lithium and write it as grams. That is gram atomic mass. Okay. So I'll, I'll explain how it happens also. See now, what was the, for lithium, what was the RAM? 6.94 AMU. Correct. If you write it in gram, that is 6.94 grams, then that is gram atomic mass. So how is this same as this? This is the AMU, which is a very small unit to measure masses of atoms. How is it same to 6.94 grams? Grams is a much bigger mass. So when will this be equal is if you take a certain quantity of lithium. How much quantity? So they're taking gases. Okay, this works for gases. If you take one mole of a certain gas, the mass of that one mole of gas will be this. The same as AMU. Again, let's take a gas, oxygen. Okay, what is the AMU for oxygen? Now I'm taking an atom or I'm taking a molecule. O2 is what? Is it an atom or molecule? It's a molecule. Okay, the atom will be oxygen. Okay, so what is the RAM of oxygen? Oxygen's mass is how much? Huh? 16. 12 is carbon, no? Okay, let's let's look at the actual weight. Okay, where's oxygen? Look at the mass of oxygen. How much is it? So close to 16, but not 16, right? 15.999. Okay, let's uh, round it off to 16. Okay, so the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16 AMU. What will be the relative? Now, we can't call RAM for O2, so we'll call it RMM. What's RMM? Relative molecular mass. See, this is relative atomic mass for atoms, and this is the relative molecular mass. So what is the relative molecular mass for oxygen? 16 into 2. Because there are two atoms in the molecule. So that is 32 AMU. You understand? Now, what will be the gram molecular mass? Gram molecular mass means the same, the mass of oxygen in grams. It will be 32 grams. Provided we take one mole of oxygen. So one mole again, what is one mole? It's a quantity. Just like how you measure volume. It's a unit of volume. Mole is a unit of volume. It's a little confusing. I want all of you to listen carefully because you're learning this new unit. Okay. What is one mole? A mole is a unit of volume. Okay, how big it is, I'll tell you. 
But if you take one mole of any gas, its mass would be how much? Same as the relative molecular mass. Okay. So one mole of oxygen would weigh 32 grams. What if I took two moles of oxygen? Two into 32 grams, right? So depending on how many moles of oxygen, one mole would weigh the same as the AMU, relative molecular mass. Okay. So now we need to know for sure what is this one mole, right? We're talking about what is this one mole? Oxygen. 32 grams. What if I take one mole of hydrogen? What will be the weight? One mole of oxygen is 32 grams. What about one mole of hydrogen? Hydrogen is H2. One into one is the AMU. One hydrogen, one atom. Its mass is one. And there are two of them. It's two AMU, uh, two grams. What will be the weight of one mole of nitrogen? So one nitrogen's mass is how much? A single atom's mass is 14. 14 is a mass number. So 14 into 2. That's 28 grams. Okay? Understand? Okay. Let's talk about one mole. How much is one mole? So we'll study three things about one mole. First is what is its volume? Okay. In a more understandable unit. So which volume, which unit of volume do we use more often? Okay, liters, you know liters, right? One mole is 22.4 liters. Hmm. How much is liter? Or how much will this be? 22.4 liters. You know these big water cans that we take, pour it upside down. How many liters is that? That is 20 liters. Okay, so around that much. Around that much is one mole. Okay. All right, you guys rejoin the meeting immediately. So what we have seen, we have seen how big is one volume. The space, one mole. How much is one mole? It's 22.4 liters. You can imagine the size by thinking of one water bottle. Okay, that 20 liter bottle, a little bigger than that. That is one volume. So now if I take that one, one mole and if I fill it with oxygen, what will be the weight of that oxygen? 32 grams. If I fill that same bottle now with nitrogen, what will be the weight? 28 grams. And if I fill it with hydrogen, the weight will be 2 grams because hydrogen is very light. Correct. So you can see the weight. You're able to measure the weight of a gas if you take uh, one mole of that particular gas. Okay, next. What does this one mole contain? What is it made up of? atoms or molecules, right? If I take O2, then that whole one mole is made up of oxygen molecules. If I take N2, then that one mole is made up of N2 molecules. Now, how many molecules are in this space? In this one mole, how many molecules are there? How will you find, find out? Somebody found out, okay? Avogadro, he found out and he gave the number also. He said, if you take one mole of any substance, it will have exactly 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 molecules. This is the number of molecules that is present in one mole of any substance. Whether you take one mole of hydrogen or one mole of oxygen or even one mole of any atom they are saying, even if it's solid or liquid. Okay, It will have these many molecules inside them. So what will we know now about one mole? We know its volume. We know the number of molecules it contains. The third thing is its weight. What will be the weight of one mole? So that depends on what gas you're taking, what substance you're taking. If you're taking one mole of oxygen, then its weight will be 32 grams. If you're taking one mole of hydrogen, then its weight will be two grams. Okay. 
So basically, it is its molecular weight. Okay, the weight in grams of one mole will be its molecular weight. Is that clear, everyone? Three points only you need to know about one mole. What is its volume? How many molecules it contains? And what is its weight? Is everyone clear about these three points? Okay, note this down. Uh, you have to take the element or the substance as a gas. Only then it will follow these properties. Like if you take uh, 22.4 liters of water, then the weight is... Okay, what is the weight of water? One mole of H2O. So H, hydrogen is 1 into 2, because there are 2, plus oxygen's mass is 16. So it's 2 plus 16, it's coming 18 AMU. Correct? So 18 AMU is the mass of water. What? Which which form should the water be in? Solid, liquid or gas? Gas. Okay. Just imagine one mole of water. Think of... One mole of water is that 22.4 liter jug. Is that one's weight 18 grams? What is the weight of that whole barrel of water? If it's 22.4 liters, its weight is 22.4 kgs, not few grams. It's 22.4 kgs. And here we are saying it's 18 grams. How is it possible? That's because the water should be in what state? Yeah. Gaseous state. Okay. So these vapor. properties, yeah, there should be water vapor. So these properties work only if you take that substance as a gas. Even if it's a solid, you have to melt it and heat it and evaporate it and make it into a gas. Only then it will. Uh, follow these properties. That is, it will take this much volume, these many molecules in it, and its weight will be equal to its molecular weight. Okay. Everyone clear about this one mole? Now, since this number has been found out by Avogadro, they call this number as the Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. 6.023, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. A few years ago, it was 6.023. Now it's huh? now it's 6.022. Okay, Avogadro's number. I'll read the definition from your book. Page number 77. Definition is here. Ah, oh, it's not here. Okay. Avogadro's number is defined as the number of atoms present in 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope. 12 grams because that will be the weight of uh, carbon, one mole of carbon, its mass will be 12 grams because 12 gram is its AMU, atomic mass unit. So if you take 12 grams of carbon, it's uh, it will have 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms or molecules. If you take, yeah, if you're taking a, a carbon, yeah, atoms. Carbon, when we write, we write C only, no? So whether it is atom or molecule, it has only one atom in that molecule. But if it's like H2, O2, there's two of them, two atoms in the molecule. Okay, let's see how we're going to use this now. <clears throat> uh, before going to the numericals, let's see some more examples. We'll make a small table. We'll write the element or the compound, so molecule. We will write down its number of moles. Molar mass. Molar mass means mass of one mole. Okay, what is molar mass? Mass of one mole. And which unit is that in? We take grams, no? Like one mole, if you're measuring the mass, the mass will be in grams. Then we have the volume. Now, volume we can take in which unit? See, here I wrote down the volume. Where is it? I wrote in liters. It can also be in dm cube. Okay. What is dm cube? Hmm? What is dm? 
no? Decimeter. So it's either 22.4 liters or 22.4 decimeter cube. If you take in centimeter cube, centimeter cube is a smaller unit. So then you have to multiply this with 1000 and it will be 22,400 centimeter cube. Liter and decimeter cube is the same. Liter, uh, decimeter is 10 centimeters. Do you remember this? One decimeter is 10 centimeters. So one dm cube will be 10 into 10 into 10 centimeters. 10 centimeter length, 10 centimeter breadth, and 10 centimeter height. That much. That is one liter. If, if it's a box and you fill it with water, then water will be one liter. Okay. So one decimeter cube is one liter. Kg is a unit of mass. We are taking units of volume. But one liter of water is one kg, right? Not one liter of anything else. One liter of water is one kg. Okay. Okay, so we have moles, we have molar mass, we have the volume, and we'll take volume in the standard unit. I mean, standard unit is meter cube. We don't take meter cube. We'll take liters or dm cube. Liter or dm cube is the same. And then last column we have is number of molecules. We'll see number of atoms also. Okay, write down this table. Okay, let's take one mole of sulfur. What will be the molar mass? Come on, focus here. This is important, it's confusing, I'm telling you. Out of this whole chapter, this Avogadro's number and using of mol, uh, molar, I mean, questions containing moles will be the most confusing. I have to do it for many years to be able to get it right. Okay, so you have to do it in one year. So sulfur, take one mole of sulfur, what is its molar mass? So whatever the mass of sulfur's atom, that will be its molar mass. Do you know what's the atomic num uh, mass number of sulfur? What's the atomic number of sulfur? Sixteen, and the mass number is double of sixteen. That is thirty-two. Okay, so the mass uh, molar mass is thirty-two grams. What is the volume of this one mole of sulfur? How much space it will, will it occupy? One mole of sulfur. Twenty-two point four dm cube. Right. One mole, no, one mole of anything will occupy that much space. How many molecules will have will it have? 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 molecules. And each molecule only has one atom. So there will also be 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms. Is that clear, everyone? Let's take one mole of oxygen now. What will be the molar mass? So one mole of, we're talking about the whole oxygen molecule, O2. One oxygen's mass is 16 into two, that is 32 grams. What will be its volume? How much space will it occupy? 22.4 liters. How many molecules will it have? And how many atoms will it have? Look, one molecule of oxygen has how many atoms? One molecule of oxygen has how many atoms? One molecule. Two atoms of oxygen. So these many molecules will have how many atoms? Ah, two into this much. These many atoms. Is that clear? Remember, atoms is this two atoms in one molecule, right? So you have to multiply two with that. Now I want you to write down. Okay, we'll do one more. NH3 also I'll do for you. We'll do it together. Take one mole of NH3. We're all taking one mole, okay? You remember, if we take two moles, what will happen? Everything will get doubled. Into two, you'll have to do for everything. For the mass, for the volume, for the number of molecules and everything. Whatever we're doing right now is only for 
one mole. Keep that in mind. Okay. So one mole of NH3. What is its molar mass? Nitrogen's mass is 14. Plus three hydrogen's masses? Three into one, three. So that is 17 grams. Volume is same, 22.4 liters. This is same. Now here, number of atoms, how many atoms are there? See, there's one nitrogen and there's three hydrogen. So the the how many nitrogen atoms will be there? How many hydrogen atoms will be there? Nitrogen will be 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. And hydrogen? 3 into this value. Okay. Do the same thing for calcium chloride. Okay, if you're writing for calcium chloride, just check. So one mole of calcium chloride. Did you get it? Molecular mass? Molar mass? How much? Huh? 40. How did you get 40? Only calcium. Okay. Calcium is 40. Plus chlorine is how much? It's 35.5. Yeah. So it's 2 into 35.5. Only chlorine's mass, no? We're taking the actual masses, not the, not the, yeah, so you round it up to 35.5. Yes, because it's right in the middle, no, you can't round it up to 35 or 36, because it's right in the middle. Only for chlorine, you have to remember this, the mass, not mass number, this is the atomic mass or the atomic weight or relative molecular mass. It is 35.5, okay, not 35 or 36. So 40 plus 71, that's 111 grams. And I'm a bit confused of how to calculate this molar mass. You're adding the masses of everything. So calcium's mass is 40 and chlorine's mass is 35.5. And there's two of them, so into two. They will, they will give you the masses. So don't worry about that. Whenever there's any question related to masses, they will always give you the mass. Now in your book for volume, they have put a dash. They have not given this volume. Why is that? This volume works only if you take it as in a, in a gaseous state. Calcium chloride is a solid. So you can't, I think it's not, you can't make it into a gas. So that's why they just put a dash over there. Okay, it has to be a gas. Now, number of molecules. Molecules will always be this much. Atoms, you'll have to separately write calcium atoms and chloride, chlorine atoms. Oh, by the way, it's not atoms. So in calcium chloride, calcium chloride is an electrovalent compound. Electrovalent means it's made up of a metal and a non-metal. So we don't write just atoms. Here we'll write atoms or ions. So you have calcium ions, that is Cu2 plus ions, and chloride is Cl1 minus. So you have to write number of ions, not number of atoms. Okay, so how many calcium ions are there? Huh? So there's one atom only in one molecule. So same number, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. For chloride, there are two chloride, chloride ions. So you'll have to multiply two. Two into 6.022 into 10 raised to Okay, we'll do a numerical now using all these values. Again, for every question that you're doing from this 
exercise, you have to understand this, take this much, the small chart here. That is, what is this one mole? It's volume, number of atoms or molecules, and it's weight. When I was in school in 10th, I thought mole and molecule were the same thing. Are they the same thing? No. Molecule is the, like the, the particles, right? And mole is a unit of quantity, unit of volume. Yeah. So that was sad in my part. I didn't know what it was. But now I can explain to you what it is, right? Okay. So here. So understand this concept. These three things, if you understand this, you can solve any questions based on this part of the chapter, okay? So let's see one example in page number 78. Okay, here. Page number 78, example two. The number of atoms in one mole of one gram of an one gram gram atom of an element is 6.023. Okay, so that's the number of atoms in one mole. Yes, we know that already, right? Calculate, okay, they're not taking 6.022, they're taking 6.6 6 into 10 raised to 23. So that's what they want you to take. It helps you to simplify your calculations. First question is calculate the number of molecules in 14 grams of nitrogen gas. Okay, so we need to write nitrogen one, we need to write one mole of nitrogen. Nitrogen gas is formula is what? N or N2? N2. And then you write everything you know about that one mole. Okay. What are they asking? Calculate the number of molecules. So they are asking you this one here. This is number, right? This is first was what? Volume. Number and here is what? The weight. Okay, so what they're asking is what is the number of molecules in 14 grams? No, grams is the fact, right? Weight is here. So 14 grams. This is what they're asking. What is the weight of 14 grams? Now, what all do we know? We know three things. Let's write those three things that we know. I mean, we don't need volume because they're not asking anything about volume. They're only comparing number of molecules or number of atoms. See, they're saying atoms, no? So I think we should not take N2. N2 is molecule, right? Atoms, so we should take N only. Yeah. All right. So the question is related to the number of atoms and the weight. What do we know about number of atoms and weight? So number of atoms we know is 6. Point, just 6. Okay. 6 into 10 raised to 23 atoms are there in what is and what's the weight? Weight of nitrogen, huh? 14 grams, 14 grams. See, this is what we know. This is what we have to find. We know that 14 grams of nitrogen atom weighs 14. They said atom, but they're taking the molecule only. It's number of atoms in one mole of gram atom of an element. Okay, that is just the number. Question is saying what? The number of molecules. Okay, so we're taking molecules only. This one, they just gave the number. Okay, the number of atoms or molecules or whatever is 6 into 10 raised to 23, not 6.022. First question is they're saying is, if you take a molecule of nitrogen, so molecule of nitrogen is N2. So here, what is the mass of that? Huh? Second is 14. That's the question. Here, 28. 28 grams is the actual mass of one mole of nitrogen. All right. So this is what is uh, given, what you have, and this is what you have to find. So we just cross multiply this and we can find the missing value. Okay. But we'll write it as statements. So what's the statement we'll write? Make a statement with 28 grams and this. So we can say 28 grams of nitrogen contain 6.0 sorry 6 into 10 raised to 23 molecules this is what we know from what we learned right what are they asking 
they are asking 14 grams of nitrogen contain how much? So cross multiply. So if we take this as x, so x into 28, 28x is equal to 14 into 6 into 10 raised to 23. Therefore, x is equal to 14 into 6 into 10 raised to 23 divided by 28. So 14 ones are and here 14 twos are. We can cut 6 and 2. That is 3. So the answer is 3 into 10 raised to 23 molecules. We found the number of molecules now in 14 grams. Okay. You see, it's a little confusing, but for every question over here, wherever whenever you talk about mole, you first do this. Write on all three. From all the three, we don't use all the three. Here we're using only two: the number of molecules and the weight. Make two lines, two statements, then cross multiply. Okay, write this down. Do the B part. The total number of atoms in 18 grams of water. So make a same table like this for water. Fill it up with what you know and what you have to find. So here the comparison is about total number of atoms, number of atoms and weight. So 6.6 6 into 10 raised to 23. And weight of one mole of water is how much? 54. We just did water, no, here. Oh, we didn't do water. We did somewhere. 16 plus 2, yeah. Here. 16 plus 2, 18. Eighteen grams. That is the weight of one mole of water. They're asking total number of atoms in 16 grams of 18 grams of water. Total number of atoms in 18 grams. So that only, right? Let's just check. Oh, atoms. Okay. See, this is what we have is molecules. 6.023 molecules. So we know that 18 grams contain 6 into 10 raised to 23 molecules. How many atoms will it contain? So one atom, sorry, one molecule of water has how many atoms? Huh? Three atoms. So you have to multiply 3 with this to get the number of atoms. Therefore, 18 grams contain 3 into 6 into 10 raised to 23 yeah. atoms. Which is 18 into 10 raised to 23 atoms. Confusing a little bit, right? I mean, once you understand molecules, atoms, what is there, then it's okay. Okay, last one. The number of chloride ions in 111 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. The number of chloride ions in 111 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. Okay, so again, what all do we have? What all do we need? They're asking what number and they have given the weight. What we know is, we know 6 into 10 raised to 23 and the weight of calcium chloride is how much? We just found it out earlier, 111 grams. And they're asking number of chloride ions in 111 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. This is for CaCl2. So each atom has two chloride ions. 
So you have to multiply 2 with this. So 111 grams of CaCl2 will have how many chloride ions? 212, no? 212 Cl minus ions. I hope it's correct. Wait, what are they asking? Number of ions. I took weight. The number of chloride ions in 111 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. They're asking you the number. They're asking you the number in 111 grams. Okay, so 111 grams will have, I wrote wrong. Two into what? Two into this value. Six into 10 raised to 23 chloride ions. That is 12 into 10 raised to 10 raised to 23. Okay, write that down. Okay, continuing about one mole, one interesting fact. Suppose I give you a room, like this room, and I tell you, fill it with footballs. You fill the whole room with footballs. And I'll give you another same room, and I'll tell you, fill it with cricket balls. In which one you'll have more number of balls? Cricket. Why? The, ball, the cricket ball is smaller, so more balls will fit. What about gases? If I give you one room, fill it with hydrogen gas, another room, fill it with oxygen gas. Which will take more space or which will, where you can fill more molecules? Both equal? Both equal? Yeah. Why? Yeah, it's the same. So it's not like hydrogen molecules are smaller. It's actually, hydrogen molecules are smaller. Oxygen is bigger. But it's not the same like football and cricket ball. The same number of molecules will fit in that, in the same volume of space. That is the property about uh, gas is occupying space. Okay. So whether you have smaller atoms like hydrogen or bigger atoms like oxygen, still there will be the exact same number of molecules in one mole of space. Okay, that is 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. This number is called the Avogadro's constant. Okay. The third thing we saw about one mole is its weight. What is the weight of one mole of oxygen? What is the weight of one mole of hydrogen? What will be the weight? It's molecular weight. So molecular weight of hydrogen is uh, how much here? Molecular weight of hydrogen H2 is 1 into 2. That is 2 AMU, atomic mass unit. And the, the weight in grams will also be 2 grams. 1 mole of nitrogen, the atomic mass the weight of that molecule is 20, uh, 28 AMU, atomic mass unit. 14 is the atomic number. Mass number. 14 is the mass number for nitrogen. So N2 has 14 into 2. So that is 28 AMU would be the mass of one molecule of nitrogen. And one mole of nitrogen will be 28 grams. You just write that AMU instead of AMU, right? Grams. One mole of water. The molecular mass of water is 18 AMU. And one mole of water will be 18 grams. Okay. So that is what we know about one mole. We know its volume. We know its uh, number of atoms or molecules. And we know it's weight. Okay. So we used this for some numericals that we did yesterday. Avogadro's? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what's Avogadro's law today. Avogadro's constant is that number. Now, what is Avogadro's law? Where is that law? Ah, so that only about number of molecules. If you take equal volumes of gases, say one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen, they will have the same number of molecules. That's Avogadro's law. See, it had to be a law because otherwise you will think like the football and the cricket ball case. You will think that the smaller the atom, there will be more molecules or more atoms. If the bigger the atom, less number of atoms. But that's not how it is. Avogadro's law states that if the volume is same, then the number of molecules will also be the same. Is that clear, everyone? What is Avogadro's law? Okay, better show your book.
uh, yeah, provided the temperature and pressure remains constant. Because if you change the temperature, if you increase temperature, what will happen? It will expand. And if you increase pressure, they will contract, right? So you cannot change these values. They should be constant. And then it will be this thing. Okay, let's see some more numericals from here now. See this first question. Calculate the number of moles of nitrogen in 7 grams of nitrogen. Calculate the number of moles of nitrogen in 7 grams of nitrogen. So any question that has moles, you will make this chart. Okay, you write 1 mole. Okay, and all the 3 things that you know about it. First is the, the volume the number of molecules and the weight, okay? So, uh, and we are doing nitrogen over here. So for nitrogen, volume is how much? Well, volume is always 22.4 liters. Number of molecules is always 6.0 or 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. Sometimes they'll tell you to take six instead of 6.022. And the weight, now what is the weight of nitrogen? You need to find that. So weight of nitrogen will be, now mass number of nitrogen is 14. So 14 into two, that is 28 grams. Okay, one mole of nitrogen will be 28 grams. Okay. So this is all what we know. Now, what is the question asking? Calculate the number of moles. Okay, they're asking number of moles in seven grams of nitrogen. See, they're comparing these two things. So they can compare any of these one, two, three, four. Out of these four values, they can compare any two values. So now, right now they're comparing number of moles and the mass. So we write a statement. One mole contains, or one mole has a mass of how much? Mass of 28 grams. You need to make a statement with what are the, whatever those values are. So the statement is one mole has a mass of 28 grams. What is the question? Calculate the number of moles in 7 grams. So how many moles has a mass of 7 grams? This is the question. And then we cross multiply. So missing value, we take it as x. So if you cross multiply, x into 28. That's 28x is equal to 1 into 7. So x is equal to 7 upon 28 that is 1 upon 4 which is 0 0.25 moles they're asking us number of moles right so the answer is 0 0.25 moles okay so what are the steps to solve this first you have to just draw this on the rough side so that you have a clarity on what is where and how and out of these four values Mostly you'll be comparing two values. So in this question, the two values are number of moles and the, the weight. So then you make two statements. One statement is with what values you have written here. The second statement is regarding what they've asked. Then you just cross multiply that to find the missing one. Is that clear, everyone? Okay, do this one. And then you can also do the second question here. Did anyone get the second one? So here we have one mole, uh, volume 22.4 liters, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. And what is the mass? This is carbon monoxide. So you have to find mass of carbon monoxide. Carbon's mass is how much? 12 plus oxygen's mass is 16. So that is 28 grams. Okay. Now, what are the two values they're comparing over here? Mass of 50 cc. Cc is what? Yeah, centimeter cube. So we need to write the volume in centimeter cube. How much is that? 22,400 centimeter cube. All right. So what are the two values they're comparing? The volume in centimeter cube and the mass. These are your two values. So you make a statement with these two values. What will be your statement? Any 
any statement that has both these values is simply for cross multiplication. So tell something. Twenty-two thousand four hundred centimeter cube weighs weighs no weight weighs twenty-eight grams. Simple, yeah. So what do we have to find? Calculate the mass. They are asking the mass of fifty cc. Fifty cc means centimeter cube. So fifty cc weighs how much? And here you will cross multiply. Do you understand? How many of you got it before I explained? No? Same steps. Every question in this is a little confusing if you don't follow the steps. Just follow the same steps. I know they would have taught you different method in school and all that, but I found out this is the extremely most simplest method to solve this. You write down this three. You're not using all three. I mean, you're not using all four. You're going to use only two. Make two statements, cross multiply. That's it. Clear or not? Do. What's the answer? Hmm? See, you go in decimal point and all that. You have to do it. Okay. Okay, calculation you completed on later on. If you're not getting it, you got it? You got it? You have to still get it. What are you getting? 16. Oh, huh? sure. Where is your X? Where's the X? The missing value is X, no? X is where? So you are finding x. So this has to go down. Okay, that went down. Okay, so you have to divide this. 7, 7 and come in 7. 7 upon 112 with 7 inside 112 outside. No. You do not write this. How do you write it? If it's 7 divided by 112, you have to write like this. 7 divided by 112. Okay? Hmm. Wrong you read Okay, uh, let's look at this question here. A silicon chip used in an IC integrated circuit of a microcomputer has a mass of 5.68 mg. What is m? Hmm? Are mg is what? Milligram. How many silicon atoms are present in this chip? So what are the two values they are comparing? Number of atoms and mass. See, once you understand the question, no, then you don't need to draw that three things and all that. You can directly see, okay, they're comparing what? Number and mass. So then you have to make a statement with number and mass. So what do you know about silicon now? Now they give you the mass or they might not give you, but yeah, mostly they'll give. Now, silicon's mass is 28 grams. Okay, if you're writing this like this, then one mole of silicon, its mass is 28 grams. Okay, and what are we comparing is the number, 6, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. They're comparing these two values, the number and the mass, right? How many silicon atoms? The number, and this is the mass. So what is your statement you will make first out of these two? Tell a statement with number and grams. You cannot waste time in making a statement. That's not the important part. But you have to make a statement. Okay, 28 grams of silicon has or contains 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms. Correct? Or you can say the other way also, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atom weighs 28 grams. 
Okay, anyway. Now what uh, they are asking is milligram. The question is 5.68 milligrams of silicon contains how many atoms? Yeah, that's another question. Now look at the unit, the grams and the milligram. It's not matching. So you need to convert this 28 grams into milligrams. How do you convert grams to milligrams? Which is a bigger unit, grams or milligram? Hmm? Gram is bigger, milligram is smaller. So to convert from bigger unit to smaller unit, what do you have to do? Huh? Into. See, it's, think of think of uh, one meter and one centimeter, which is a bigger unit. Meter. So one meter, how do you convert to centimeters? Mm -hmm. Multiply with 100. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Right. So to convert to a smaller unit, you're multiplying with whatever the conversion rate is. So this will be 28,000 grams. Uh, sorry, not gram. Milligram of the thing contains this much. 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms. Are you getting it? Okay, so these are the two values you'll be cross multiplying. So 28,000 into x is equal to 5.68 into 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. Yeah? You don't have to do any calculation with 6.022 into 20, 10 raised to 23 because it's very hard to do division and multiplication with 6.022. So you leave it as it is. Unless they tell you in the question to use 6 into 10 raised to 23. If they say 6, then you have to use 6 for your calculations. For 6.022, you don't do. Okay, so x is equal to 5.68 into 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 divided by 28,000. All right. How do we how do we solve this now? Is there any easy way? With zeros. Okay. So 10 raised to 23 has 23 zeros. So cut three zeros there and three zeros here. So that will become? Yeah. So 5.68 into 6.022 into 10 raised to? 20 divided by 28. Okay. So this is the, so actually they're using the 6.022 also for your calculation. They're not just leaving it as it is. Okay. In your answer, they have multiplied that also and divided it with 28. Okay. So multiply these two, get it off the decimal point and divide with 28. So how do you get rid of the decimal point? So here, totally how many decimal points we have? One, two, three, four, five decimal places. If you want to move the decimal place, five place front, what do you have to do? Like you can write this as 568 into 6022. So you're making this number bigger. So this number, you'll have to make it smaller. So into 10 raised to how much? 15, because five places we moved the point out. So this 10 raised to 20, you make it small by five place, divided by 28. All right, so this division we can do, cal cutting whatever is possible, and then write it as standard value. Okay, so cut only how much you can cut. Don't keep cutting, cutting, cutting. Uh, just to make it easier, we can cut. So should we cut this? Which tables? Seven tables, seven, seven eights are 56 and then eight is not going. Seven, six, zero, two, two, does it go in seven tables? Seven, eights are 56, carry four, seven, seven, no, it's not going in seven tables also. So just cut it in two tables. 14. Two carry one eight four. Again, cut in two tables. Okay. Once you get seven in the denominator, then you can multiply and divide with seven. It becomes easy. Okay. Now let's do this much. Tell me the answer.
I just cut it enough so that I can so that my division is by seven and not by twenty eight. Okay, so here I think the calculations are much more difficult than maths, right? You have some nice big multiplications and division, but still you should not take so long for this. Too fast. Did you get the answer for this division? Like it's coming one two two one six zero point five seven into ten raised to fifteen. Okay. Anyway, see, you can go home and complete it. Now, this is not the standard. Standard form means you should have only one decimal number, one number before the point. So we need to move this point five places to the left. So it'll be one point two two. If you make this five places to the left, you're making it smaller. So this should be made five places bigger. 10 raised to 20. This is the answer. All right. I'll just say that again. In this question over here, uh, what have they given is they have given a gas has a certain volume. But this volume is only when the temperature is 27 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 700 mm. Both of which are not standard. Standard temperature is supposed to be 0 degrees Celsius and standard pressure is supposed to be 760 mm. So we need to find what is the volume at the standard temperature and pressure first before we go ahead. So these values that are given will take it as V1, T1 and P1. And we have to find V2. This is T2. This is P2. So which formula do we use here to find V2? There's a formula relationship between all this. huh? Gas equation. Gas equation is what? P1, V1 upon T1 is equal to P2, V2 upon T2. So in this, we first use this. You'll go home and do this, okay? You will use this formula to find V2. Right? So now, once we get the V2, then we can go ahead with the rest of the question. Now, what are they asked? Calculate the mass of the substance and the molecular mass of that substance is 60. So again, coming back to your table, Okay, here we have one mole. Here we have the, the volume. See, this is the volume that we are going to get now. Okay, we're going to get something. Anyway, what is the volume in dm cube? 22.4 dm cube. The number of moles is 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. Anyway, we're not going to use that here. And the mass, what is the mass of the substance? It's given. 60 gram. Instead of giving the name of the compound and we have to find it, they only give us the mass. So what we know about the substance is 1 mole's volume is 22.4 dm cube and its mass is 60 gram. Now we uh, write two statements. The first statement is what we have in this and the second statement is what we have to find. So what are we comparing here? Out of these four values, what are we comparing? Mass and Mass and weight is same. Volume, mass and volume. Okay. So this is volume, this is mass. So make a statement with these two. Volume and mass. Weighs 60 grams or 60 gram. Uh, occupies 22.4 dm cube. Okay, however, now what we have to find is we have to find the mass. We have the volume. We got it over here. So put that volume over here, whatever the volume V2 is, and you'll write that statement. V2 of weighs how many grams? So this is your x. You cross multiply this and you will find x. So two steps here. First was to find the volume at standard temperature and pressure, STP. And the second one was to find this missing value by cross multiplication. Is that clear? How are these sums? It's confusing also a little bit. And the numbers are a little complex. Calculation takes time. Okay. So to avoid the confusion, you have to draw this diagram. And to be able to do calculation fast, you have to practice, get the fastest method. Okay. All right. So just note down this much and you can complete this one as your homework. After this, we'll be changing the subject. You have any other subject?
maths okay right on this first i'll put the question on the group there are 19 examples you have to try at least half of them 